Hi, in this video, I'm just going to show you this particular resource for making the calculation of intervals easier. And apart from any questions you might have to face on intervals, it might also help you with things like transposition. So it works like this, that basically, if we start on the assumption that an interval is either perfect or major, and if it's something else, it kind of starts life as perfect or major and goes from there, you'll see the purpose of what we're doing here. So you can download this as a PDF, but let me just show you how to do it. So we have intervals that are perfect. So let's just stick that word here. And the perfect intervals are the fourths, the fifths, and the octaves. Okay, so if a perfect interval becomes a semitone bigger than perfect, then it becomes augmented. So this is not a crescendo sign, it's a kind of mathematical sign, lesser than, greater than. And each one of these is a semitone's worth, all right? So if an interval is a semitone bigger, in other words, the notes are a semitone further apart than a perfect interval should be, then it must be an augmented interval. If by the same token, a perfect interval is actually no longer perfect because it's a semitone smaller than it should be, then it becomes diminished. So it's quite useful, you see, because if you know that the fourths, the fifths and the octaves are the perfect intervals, and you know that a perfect interval is either perfect or it gets changed to augmented or diminished, it stops you dealing with calling things minor fifths and things, because there's no minor in sight when you're dealing with a perfect interval. Okay, so for example, C to G is a perfect fifth, because C, D, E, F, G is a fifth, you work in the major scale of the lower note, and the fifth note of C major is G. Because G is the fifth note of C major, that is a perfect fifth. So C up to G, perfect fifth, because G is the fifth note of C major. And this helps you to remember that because it's a fifth, it must be perfect. So anything that's a fourth or fifth or an octave is a perfect interval. Now, instead of it being C up to G, if it was C up to G sharp, you can see that I had C to G, now I've got C to G sharp, it's now a semitone bigger. My hands are now a semitone, as it were, further apart. So the intervals got bigger, the distance between the two notes. So if I go C to G sharp, it must be an augmented fifth. If, however, I go C to G flat, then that's one semitone smaller than a perfect fifth, isn't it? So there's my perfect fifth, C to G, C to G flat, semitone smaller. So that must be a diminished fifth. Okay, so that's how the perfect intervals work. Now, the fourth, fifth and octaves are perfect. Everything else is major. So as long as you can remember four, five, eight, perfect, everything else is major, then this table works very nicely. If you make a major interval a semitone bigger, just as before, it becomes augmented. If you make a major interval a semitone smaller, this time it becomes minor. So this is where the minors come in. And if you make a minor interval a semitone smaller, then that's when it becomes diminished. Okay, so that's how the table actually works. So if I've got, say, a third, C to E, so C, D, E, it's a third. If E is the third note of C major, this is a major third, and it is. So. That's why it's major, because it's not a fourth or fifth or an octave, so it's not perfect, so it must be major. So seconds, thirds, sixths and sevenths will be major. 
C to E, major third, because E is the third note of C major. But if I made it C to E sharp, then it would become an augmented third because it's got a semitone bigger. If instead of C to E, it was C to E flat, it's got a semitone smaller, so it's minor. If it gets another semitone smaller because it's C to E double flat, then it's a diminished third. So that's the use of this interval chart. And it's why great idea if you were to get into a theory exam, you could very quickly write out that chart. Perfect, major. Augmented, diminished. Augmented, minor diminished. And then when you're calculating intervals, you can just use that chart. So the few seconds that it takes to write it down will be regained with extra bonus time just for having that there and helping you to calculate what you're doing and making sure that you don't muddle up perfect with major, that you don't get minor involved up here. It clarifies all that for you. So a very useful thing to do at the beginning, just to scribble that down to sort out intervals.